Greetings from Podcastville. It's Monday, the fucking who knows what day it is. I know it's the last motherfucking Monday in June. The rent is due on Wednesday. Taxes are due on the 15th. And unemployment ends on the 31st. <laughs> so you better pucker up, motherfuckers. Kick this fucking mule, Lee. Shit. There you go. No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. It's Monday, the 29th of June. I hope you're feeling better. I hope you potted your nuts. Last week was last week. This week is this week. Who gives a fuck? I got my girl Eleanor Kerrigan in the studio. How Yo. are you, my love? Hi. Good Should I put my you. mask back on now that you're smoking? Nah. <laughs> we got the door open. I've never been high, soldier. but I'll get a contact high from nah, you, nobody Joey. Gets, Please. Nobody gets a contact high here. We got everything. We got Lysol. We got fucking Ebola spray. <laughs> I got the shit they sprayed in black people's eyeballs. What is that? In fucking Nigeria. <laughs> this is the shit that just. We this need that from Michael over. Jordan. Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Fucking, you know, I'm just trying to protect myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a good day to be alive. Everybody's happy. Everybody's tip top too. How was Kansas? How was traveling as a Corona comic? Uh, <laughs> now that I'm the Corona comic, I'm in that list. I'm so excited to finally make a group. Uh, no, the Corona, Kansas City was great, but I will say I was nervous like flying only because I thought, fuck, I better get there early. They're going to take your temperature. They're going to do all this shit. They didn't do a fucking thing. No. I don't even think they checked my license. They I got to be honest. They don't give a fuck about flying now. <laughs> do you Dude. see what Americans doing? American and yeah. United? They're not, they're not going to have any open seats. No open seats. No open seats. Uh, there was a guy, I had cuddled with a guy the whole way. Oh, no. To and from. It was insane. Yeah, no open seating. No America. open seating. It was nothing. They were on top of us. And then I was in the airport less than five minutes and almost killed somebody. Because this guy, there was no flight that was leaving before 5.50 a.m. No fucking flight. And he was up my ass when we were going through the thing. And I'm thinking, six feet, you piece of shit, right? So then I go, you know what? You go. And I had put my stuff through. I go, just go. And then he was, uh, what do you call that? Pre-check? some shit that he'd have to go through the metal detector so he walked around the side and then my stuff came out first so he picked my shit up put it on top of somebody else's to get his and i go am i allowed to kill him and the lady just laughed she goes oh no he didn't and then she went over and took care of it (laughs) and i was like black lives do matter get him bitch get him it was, was great. The, how was the whole comedy experience for you like when you got to the club i was a nervous wreck but i i loved it it was so freeing it was so phenomenal but like we i think we were talking about this before about doing material old material or whatever like bc not before Christ, before corona you know christ is gone it's, we're bc now before, before corona and so i was like what am i gonna talk about how are my bits gonna feel so i just for the first 40 minutes almost 45 the first night i did just the shit that's been happening during corona and i was like that's what I plan this on felt doing. great that's what i plan on doing yeah it was like clearing and i mean of course you you know because you're living it you, like i write things down <coughs> but you don't know if they're gonna work i'm gonna open up a who's got toilet paper left yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying what was the fucking i want to know right now what well i got 200 in, in here who went to the storm bit toilet paper people needing machines people fucking uh, they can't breathe yeah. and you got toilet paper why does everybody what fucking who's got toilet paper and explain yourself right now i want somebody to get up and go man i still got a garage full yeah i don't know what i was thinking people's houses look like a 99 cent storefront i bought a, I bought a truck uh-uh. full of tr- toilet paper and now i got stomach cancer you know what i'm saying i haven't taken a shit in two weeks anyway so what am i gonna do with it? i hate you i gotta put it on ebay cancerous <laughs> toilet paper who wants it <laughs> Fuck it, it's Monday morning. It was great, but also around. this uh, this new thing with the uh, women, uh, middle-aged white ladies losing their fucking minds all over the place. Oh, you yeah. know, they're calling them Karens or something. Well, my older sister's name is Karen, and she is pissed <laughs> at all, you motherfuckers. She wants to fight whoever came up with that shit. 
She's like, you call me a Karen, I will knock you the fuck out. Now, where is this North Hollywood uh, uh, Trader Joe? Oh, the Trader Joe, you know Joe that Wild Macy's Lady? Macy's they knocked down? Over on Laurel Canyon. Uh, yeah, who won Victory. Where the strip Victory. club was. I yeah. thought it was like Burbank. Strip club there. Yeah. Burbank? If you miss the strip, if you miss your exit, we got to get off there sometimes. Like, there's nights I've been high <laughs> listening to a no. song. <laughs> yeah, and I got to, you know. There's nights I go the other way from the comedy store. I, I don't go Laurel Canyon. Okay. I go a long way. It's Tuesday, so I'll stop at Joe's Pizza. Oh, and then I'll shoot up. Damn, yeah. And I go up to 101, and sometimes, you know, I fucking. Have you ever gone through the hills, like behind the I'm, store I'm up like petrified. Miller Drop? Oh, I love it. Nothing scares the shit out of me more. <laughs> and people do it to me all the time. I think it's because I'm a nice guy. They come up to me and they're like, hey, Joey, do you mind dropping us off up the hill? I don't know how many waitresses have asked me. You know when you just want to go home? You just want to go home. And it's 30 not, seconds. I know. But not you. But it's oh, not 30 seconds. But it's seconds. not for him. It, thank you, Lee. Well, no, because it's 30 seconds for an intelligent individual, okay? <laughs> when you don't do Chris, Chris, Chris I see what you're listen, when you don't do uh, jigsaw puzzles, <laughs> and you know, you never were good at that game. What's that game? With? Uh, breakout? I don't know. No, yeah. Shoots and ladders? Shoots and ladders. When you're supposed to make a okay, left, but it. you make a right. Okay. That's okay, not the okay. guy you want driving up okay, the mountain. Okay, okay, I get it. Dude, one time. He, I used to live up there, so it doesn't bother one me. One time he got me high, and I was at home by myself. <laughs> He dropped someone. He dropped one of our friends off at, from the ice house, like two minutes from the ice house. He called me, expecting me to know where to get where he was, and I, I sent him the wrong way. Oh no! He's been here for like twenty years. <laughs> I've never gotten yelled at before. I sent him like up the two ten the wrong oh way. I got two in the morning. All you want to do is get home. <laughs> you got a pee. You got a piece of shit lingering in your ass, <laughs> and you're tired. You just did two shows, plus you're already gonna have insomnia. And all of a sudden, he tells me to go, and it wasn't his fault. You know, number one, I should not be driving. People should know this. But don't you have an iPhone? I mean, is this ass? I'm playing devil's advocate here. (laughs) Look at his face. He's calling me on an iPhone. Listen, if I had a tank (laughs) with military instructions... I still, I'm never going to press the button that lady comes on and says, in 2.3 miles, make a left. That's never going to happen amazing. in my world. Why? All right, because That's not. what they make it for. You should, you should do it. Because if she talks, then she, I got to talk back to her. No, you don't. Because I'll say things to her she's never heard before. I'm already She can't the, hear you anyway. Listen, yes, she can. I hear everything. Oh. Listen, my daughter fucks Siri up. You know Siri on the iPhone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She hates my daughter. She she hates Mercy. <laughs> Why? Because Mercy torments her. Mercy just doesn't ask her, how long does it take to Nashville? Mercy will go, what if I have one foot Good and a roller Mercy. skate? And then she keeps tormenting You should always try to break an until ass. Until says, her. fuck you. And Mercy just sits there <laughs> with her little face like, what did I do wrong? Oh, you asked the 18 questions. <laughs> She's playing 20 minutes. questions. So you can hear the chick go, boo, 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 and then she starts stuttering. <laughs> You ever hear sorry stutter? Like Lee? I thought the, 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 the taxes. I've never done that one. Oh I've God, never yeah. talked to Siri. Uh, she tortured oh. Siri so bad, Siri just went off. Like, bloop. Yeah. And my daughter's like, Siri, come back. Who wrote this song? And you know. <laughs> Siri, come back. <laughs> Siri, Siri, come back. <laughs> Should be a song. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah, I've done the um, Waze app or the whatever right. and gotten lost. Waze like, is the worst. Waze is Waze I'm, takes you out 18 miles. You've used Waze? No, but you did one time. I almost stabbed you. We, we, next thing you know, we're in Chicago. They'll take you back. We're in Chicago. We're headed to Irvine. I just 30 <laughs> minutes in Chicago to go to Irvine. Yeah, they try to take you yeah, on they back take roads you out of the and way. then they get lost, I think. Yeah. I swear I think they get lost because I'm like, you don't know this fucking back road. See, I used to live up on King's Road. So behind the comedy store. I lived, me, Richie Taylor, the manager. We lived at 1501 Queens Road. Or Queens Road. Yeah, that's what it was. Not Kings. Queens. So, because uh, they're two side by side. Queen and Kings. So we lived on Queens Road. So I was always up there. And then working for Mitzi, I was always on Crest Hill. Because she still had the house. Um, she didn't sell it until oof, early 2000s, maybe. Took a long time to sell that one. But. It, the crest hill was up there so i was always up that hill so it's simple for me i already know how to like navigate around it oh, and when right. i first moved there i used to walk all the hills so i was like oh this connects oh you can drive through here so if i'm all the way at sunset plaza i could get to the comedy store through the hills jesus 
the last time favorite. my dad was here, it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I got too high and I kept missing turns, mm-hmm. but you can't really do a U turn on those hills. I went all the no, way from here. They're like this big. Oh, it was terrifying. It took me like 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm very, very good Hollywood sunset. You do. Beverly. You go through side streets and like oh, alleys in Hollywood. I know, I know everything. If the cops chase me, I will lose you. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's my thing. That's Hollywood. why I'm really good at knowing from where all I'm those going. Years of. Running. Running. In Hollywood. <laughs> no. Hollywood just has, you know, Hollywood has traffic. Listen, we all have traffic in cities. Traffic. That doesn't have to happen. It's that we're all pointed at that same direction. If you do your, okay. When I used to live with Terry, we lived on Schrader. Schrader right. off the sunset in summer. Right by the Hollywood Y. Not right by the Hollywood Y. And I had two choices when I left at night. I could shoot down to Sunset, make a right, catch Highland traffic, oh, catch yeah. La Brea traffic, and then once you hit... We're talking about 2001, 90, 2000 to 2006. Once you hit Laurel Canyon... It was bumper to bumper on a Saturday night. I still Forget remember it. telling Marlon, Marilyn Martinez and her husband, <laughs> God rest their soul, to get in the middle Both lane. Them. We got a spot. Just get in the middle lane and cut all through. And we ran right into a sheriff, and he gave us all tickets. Oh. And we got to the store late because between all the rock clubs, yeah. all those artsy-fartsy clubs, no. it was bumper to bumper. So then I figured out a way. Here's the way. <laughs> Avoid all that shit. You hook and you stay on Selma. To you hit Highland. Hit the, there's a light there. Hit Selma again. Mm-hmm. All the way to you hit like. What's the other one? Guard uh, Curson. No, Curson didn't have a light. The one by Coaching Horses. You go yeah, down. Yeah, it's a one way. It's a one way after sunset. You yeah. go down that way, and that takes you down to what Kennison said: not to drink when you drink. You, fountain. Fountain. And Fountain would take me to the bottom. Of the Sweet. Mexican Sweetser. Mm-hmm. Sweetser, you pop up, you make a left, and it was still drawn between the coach house, <laughs> oh, the yeah, standard. Oh, yeah, and the, the, the goddamn uh, the, the, it was still on saddle there. ranch, whatever the f- But I, I avoided 30 minutes by one, doing that. Wow. One time I had Joey. I'm not even sure why, because I know I wasn't doing stand-up, but it was me, you, Schubert. In my car, I was driving to the store. Uh, and I was going up Sunset, I mean, um, Sweetser from Fountain to Sunset, and I was about to make the left, and Joey's going, don't miss that fucking light, cocksucker. <laughs> you miss that light, we're here for another fucking hour, oh, cocksucker. Yeah, and done. you're like yelling oh. in my ear, and I'm like gunning it of my little Toyota oh, Tercel. Yellow don't mean dick. <laughs> yellow means step on it where I come from. I see a I, yellow, you're going. And a little bit of red, who cares about and that? You, and, and if it's a little red, we Just ain't, scream at me, get it no through that light, cocksucker. No I'm like, what around. the fuck? There ain't no cops around. If Every you day it, I make that, when I would go to the store, I think of you. Now, that we live in the same building, or oh, I had a friend that lived in your building, and I would go over there. Oh, yeah, on Martell. Yes, Martell. Yes. So you lived on Martell in 98, Sunset Martell. 97. Okay. You lived there from 97. I to, lived there for 12 years. And then I lived around the corner with Josh Wolf on Curse Vista. A Vista. It was, it was Gardner. Martell. I don't know why I make it Gardner a lot of the time. Well, it was Cartel. It was uh, Martell, Vista. Gardner. I think it was, yeah. Sierra Bonita. That's it, yeah. Curson. Mm-hmm. So you and a gay guy lived. My roommate. Not the roommate. Oh, somebody else. Some a gay comic from hmm. the county store lived on Martell. Oh, okay. Josh Wolf lived on Vista. Ralphie lived on Gardner. Oh, which, oh, okay. Mitch Hedberg lived on Sierra Bonita with Nick DiPaolo. Wow. Wow. And Doug Stanhope lived on. Dougie's building had a lot of people in. That was Party Chris Central. Up. Right. That yeah. was Party Central in the low rent apartment. Right. Because it was down the corner from. And didn't Jody and them live in there too? Jody moved in in 98 okay. and all that stuff. So 
Stanhope lived across the street. If all Stanhope had to do was wake up, walk two blocks across the street, and he'd be at coaching horses. Yes. So the the everybody went to coaching horses. That was the main thing. Right next to Samuel French. Right next to Samuel French. I, I have I probably gave them one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to become a moron. <laughs> Some people give a college a hundred thousand dollars a year, Same. and they're still morons. I have so many fucking. So plays. if you if you owe student God loans right it. now, I do not want you to feel guilty because we gave a guy named Samuel French <laughs> a wing to his the door. Yeah, I, I do not throw. It's away probably it. still open. That's closed. No. Coaching horses is closed. No. I don't even no, know. Closed. Samuel just an agent books. Within the last year, last two okay, years. Okay, because it's not that months. long. First, the one up here closed. I don't know. The you guys remember there was one up here by the McDonald's across no. the street, right there. I went to Playhouse there West for little, years. Yes, there was one right there, and there was one <laughs> on Sunset. You know when, 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 how much when, money when acting have, class. When I was when books. I talked to you about me and Eleanor, we used to have a lot of conversations about acting. Eleanor and me had a lot of comic. Eleanor used to date an agent that was big time that went off the. She was engaged to him. We my first ex fiance. And he went off the deep ends. He was a typical agent. He was Jerry Maguire <laughs> with a Colombian guy next. He to was him. he was saying? different than Jerry Maguire because he uh, uh, got fired for catering to his black clients, and then when he got fired, they all left with him. So he was like a. They, they his clients were Martin Lawrence, Chris Rock. Damn. Um, Tommy Davidson, Adele Givens. Um, I know I'm missing somebody. Martin Lawrence, I said, right? Martin Chris, that was his big guys. Oh, and Russell Simmons, who had this idea of like, hey, we should start a black comedy show. Uh, Def Jam. So they all were partook wow. in all of that, every single thing. Um, I'm trying to think of who else he had, like Ricky Harris, all those guys. Every black comic left with him, and then they became superstars, and then William Morris brought him back. I mean, he went off the deep end, but he's better and he's married and has a kid. So I'm happy for him. But I would have had 10 children with him had he kept his shit together. This was what year? 97 when I met you in 96? I started dating him like 94. Okay. Yeah, I met him right when I first moved. I, I started at 93 at the store and then I met him. He was like coming in. Him, he would come in with Worthy Patterson. Remember Worthy? Worthy is his best friend. <laughs> I should have known. Sorry, Worthy. I should have known. Worthy's a very good man. I love Worthy. Worthy we, a, where is he? He's great. I still talk to him every once Send in a while. Yeah, I will. He's a good guy. Because I talk to Michael Hubbard still. And very honest. <laughs> worthy? Yeah. He told you what was on his mind. He told you what yeah. he could do for you, what he couldn't do for you, and he told you when he couldn't do something for you, and you couldn't take offense at that. You'd put your head down and turn away, but then you'd go, how many people haven't been honest with me? Right. Used this guy's honest with me. He bought me a lunch. He bought me when Bobby Lee tells that story about us being poor. Yeah. And that's uh, funny and you brought him up, but yeah, yeah. Me and Bobby were <laughs> no food to eat, pretty much three days away from homeless at the fucking Latino Laugh Festival. It was him who took us out to dinner when he found out we had no money. Nothing. Yeah. Said, Worthy's a good Worthy's guy. A great I guy. I mean I break his balls because I know a little too much. But um, he he's very funny, whatever. He's very honest. But we were doing a show for Michael Hubbard for this. Um, I'm, I'm going to slip on what the benefit was for, but it was to raise money for schools or something, inner city schools. And Worthy showed up because Hubbard is Martin's guy. He does everything for Martin for years and from all the way back with Billy. I think he's like his manager or something. Um, so Hubbard uh, was there. So Worthy showed up. And so we're in the back talking like it's 1994. You know, where did we go way back? So we're laughing and joking about something. Then Bobby Lee comes up and Bobby was like, Worthy, if you're still mad at me, and <laughs> immediately turned into it. Because a, he didn't sign with him. Such a thing. We left that Saturday from dinner. We're going to sign with you. Thanks for dinner. <laughs> Bobby that did one. sign with him. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. But he just... didn't pay. A, he didn't pay him or he didn't pay somebody residuals and they had a fight over it. It, it, not residuals, um, you know, uh, commission. Commission. And I don't know if it was Worthy he didn't pay or another manager. I forget. But they immediately, Worthy was like, I, I don't give a shit. But they immediately went at it. He's like, you should have done it. You should. Like, it was like nothing left. They were still on that fight from the day they 
But then they hugged and they were fine. It was just made me laugh so hard. But Bobby did sign with him. That's why we had a big fight with him. Because me and Freddie told him not to sign with Worthy. Sorry, Worthy. That's but he crazy. knows all this. It's crazy how we were my fucking kids. Just kids. Well, people don't realize we... I got you in the other day to cover a couple things. But I wanted people to know the state of mind. Like, we had this thing come out with the video with Rogan last week. Right. Made a lot of people open up their eyes. And I'm not mad at you. Like I said uh, on the Instagram, I want women to take a stand. But it's where it's going. What I wanted to do today, since Eleanor was there from 97. 93. 93. was give you the state of mind of what was there. Now, something I brought up that was really... When it first came out, a lot of people ran for the hills. And it was the movie by Motley Crue. Oh, Dirt or whatever? The dirt, the, whatever. The Dirt, right. And if anybody knows that movie, the opening scene is a party above the uh, whatever. And they come in and, you know, they're Motley Crue. They're just the yeah. best band on the Sunset Strip at the time. Mm -hmm. They're not even the kings of rock yet. Or oh, maybe they are. And uh, some chick, they sit it down in front of 30 people. She spreads her legs. Tommy Lee eats a pussy or I don't know which one. I, haven't yeah, I remember it, yeah. And she sprays the room with fucking juice. Puss, poo, she, pussy was a, juice. she was talented she was and talented. she wanted to showcase her talents. No, and I don't, I'm not mad at her for that. You look at that as a non-member of a band, not music band. You look at that as a normal human being, especially in these times, and you look at it and you go, what type of fucking behavior is that turning that off? Or who would do something like that? In my world, what people forget is I'm a fucking prude, and I'm a Catholic, and I was raised to be a prude, and I'm still very prudish. I don't do a lot of things that most That's so funny guys to hear do. you say that, I'm but like, I like it. I'm not a playboy guy. Right. I don't like porn. If there's a chick fucking on my Twitter feed, I'll watch How it. weird is that? That she's sucking three black dicks on my Twitter feed. <laughs> I got to watch it. I don't Another think I, talented I, young lady. Don't do hate. Don't they hate. They do it so quick, you can't even bang one out. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. First of all, I wouldn't bang one out in the eye in the computer because God knows who's got your eye on you when you're banging out. Yeah, triple has got all my shit covered. Cum yeah. tongue hum, everybody else, whatever his name is. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you see all these things. I'm not a, a porno guy. I've never been. That makes I sense. I see a, what you I mean. I went to a yeah. triple X on a Sunday night because my friend said to go, and some guy tried to, like, fucking not touch me in the bathroom, but he said creepy things to me when I was 18. In Jersey, oh, they had oh, on yeah. theaters that were disgusting during the week. Mm -hmm. They showed three movies, $2 during the week. And on Sundays, they had a triple X bar. Yeah. And one night we went, it was just fucking pedophile. Like, that's what they take you on a pedophile school trip. Yeah. Like, when you're in a pedophile side of the prison, they take you to a triple X show on Sundays. And these fucking dudes would be doing everything. Oh, every, my God. You could smell sperm in the air. Your feet is sticking. Ew. You're stepping on fetuses. This uh, just you know abortion doctors are there scraping yeah. up shit to sell as they should be just just creepy shit you know and I went to one of those and it wasn't for me so. <laughs> but do you love pussy yeah you love the idea of love you love the idea of eating ass you're you a hopeless romantic Joey you know so for right now people are looking at the article they're planning on doing is looking at comedy as a whole with the comedy store being the epicenter. Cocksuckers. And how that, no, and it's not because for years, Kennison stories came out of the comedy store, and now they're, you know, coming again, whether our friend Chris D'Elia was with underage, underage girls, which I never saw him with. Did I see him with pussy? Like, Lots of like it. Like, you thought he was fucking running a Miss America contest. God bless him. For, that was years I thought, like, he's just the host of the Miss America contest. Yeah. <laughs> They're all trying to take him out to dinner to explain to him they why. They walk off the stage why, and they go, know, Chris. What do you want to do for the cares. world? Well, I want to start with world peace, and I want to bring apples back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to meet Chris D'Elia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought Chris was just running the world. Yeah, I didn't know they were under it. I would never think of that. No. But I and, was thinking. And as of a joke or no joke, <clears throat> nobody in this table knew oh. any idea of underage stuff. Whatever's been coming out has been coming out. It's news to us. There's no cover up. There's what? no nothing. 
But I was thinking of this. Like, the comedy store is 21 and over, right? Right. So it's a little harder to sneak in if you're 16, 17. Right. Especially Especially now. Now Now it's ridiculous. Now it's like Fort Knox. But before, uh, 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 the Laugh Factory and the Improv have always been 18 and over. Always. Because they serve food. So we didn't have food up until recently. And then I was pissed. I was like, you're not going to change the age limit, right? Because the comedy store is wild. And it works better as 21 and over so what i'm saying is like these girls could have been sneaking it it's easier to sneak in if it's 18 and older and you're 17 meet chris and i'm not saying like if he did something wrong that's terrible but it's it's a lot easier at 17 to go meet a guy at a comedy club that you've been dying to meet you know what i mean like i I was sneaking in clubs when i was 15 years old well even without the chris delia thing like it blew my mind when i moved to la that people drink like, even regular jobs, people would go and get hammered at lunch. Oh, yeah. This, oh, yeah. My mom. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This I know a, what you're this saying. This is a, not, not to make excuses for it, but this is a different town. This is this is the town of, when I moved here, you had open bars at Christmas parties. And people would get hammered. At, this is the first place I saw Coke. You, this is. Oh, really? The, oh, yeah. Where this, did you grow up? In a bubble? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't speak for all of Boston, but for a, a suburb. Boston? Kid, You're gonna a bring suburbs, up Boston? To suburbs? Me? Oh. No, no. Yeah, I was. A, I was a very the white. Oh, I'm, I, I'm the second. poster child for white privilege. But oh, it's. I think there's a lot of people who didn't grow up seeing this. Some people who did. We're like Lexington. Where'd yeah, you go? right, right. That's where my from ex there. lived from. But it's it's just like this is a. It, it's hard to judge this city based off of like normal business practices it's i mean it's just it, it, it's it, it's apples and oranges i think oh, absolutely and i, I, I have, i've seen one percent of it i can't imagine being there every night and 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 having access to drugs and having all that extra or no money like it's just yeah. it's it's uh this is a very different place i think i i think that, like you you might be right i mean i just i grew up different I grew up in South Philadelphia. Drugs were always around. People did them. People didn't do them. Some people did crazy things on them. Some people didn't do anything. They just existed, you know, functioning drug addicts, whatever. And like I said, I was 15. I was in nightclubs taking pictures of people. Literally, my friend hired me in her after hours nightclub to take pictures. And I was wearing like a little dress that was the size of a scrunchie. And it was like fluorescent. And I would go around taking pictures of people and charge them $10. But I was, they hired me to do that. Like, she didn't know I was that young. I was right. like, yeah. And then my older brother who worked with her was like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. Because I was 15 going on 35. Like, we grew up different. Wow. We, you know, I'm one of 10. I've My dad moved out when I was seven. So we were like wild, because my mom would call us wild Indians, not to be racist. But she kind of is. Uh, <laughs> but in a fun way like she would be like you guys are wild like you know she would try to control how are you going to control 10 kids six boys four girls in a in south philly we you know are i have friends that are doing life in prison i have friends that have been killed by cops i have i've watched cops beat people up. like i nothing is surprising to me like i'm not sure what they're gonna what so when i moved to hollywood yeah you see a different element but i'm i, I saw and this is going to sound crazy, but I saw a more privileged ele- uh, uh, element. Like yeah. if, if people had credits, they got away with things. If people had, you know, money, they got away with things. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, it's funny that now, uh, because of what I found that about people making calls to Seattle and Denver. It's so crazy. They're going to go after comedy scenes in general mm-hmm. and then comedy as a whole. And where yeah. it's gone and where it's happened. And I can tell you something. You know, let's go back to July of 91. I get into comedy. I'm just happy that people accept me. I'm doing right. one gig a month. I get into a contest. I win the contest. I become the house MC of this place. This is Denver or Seattle? This is, this is Boulder. Boulder, I, Colorado. I started in Denver. Now I'm in Boulder. I dig this waitress. She's got a boyfriend. Nothing happens. I dig this other waitress, and we start dating, you know, so the whole year and a half. The, she drops a bomb on me. She's going to see it in New York to be a PR chick, and I start dating her roommate, and that went on until February of 93, okay. and then, 
you know, that was really my whole comedy scene at that time was the broker, my house, and every once in a while I get to ask to do a gig on a Saturday night. I really wasn't committed nice. to comedy. So it I was really, like it was just me getting my feet wet. I was learning just Mondays was mind boggling. <sighs> because it was fifteen dollars for a steak. Yeah. And the comedy and the ticket and people really went to get the steak. And they gave you a shrimp bowl. So you had to be funny in the shrimp bowl. Fucking nobody is funnier than a shrimp bowl <laughs> when you haven't eaten all day and fucking, you know what I'm saying? So it was a real adventure for me to learn this. I love things. nobody. Okay, so when I went to New then I went to New York. And in New York, you have no friends. Right. I did comedy for nine months, and the only guy I knew was Mike Bichetti. Oh, I, didn't make I love any Mike girls. Bichetti. I didn't meet nobody. They're foot soldiers out there. And then yeah. I went to. I said, let me go to Colorado. And that's when I turned down the comedy heat. And that's when I became part. You become of cliques. Sure. You become part of the open mic clique, and they accept you. And then you take a chance and do a gig with a feature act, and now he invites you to that feature of clique mm -hmm. where even the MC gets $15, and you get a free drink ticket, and now there's women at those shows, and they sure. want to talk to you, and there's new female comics. There's new female comics in the uh, in the new comic. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then, but we're all just around each other, right? Yeah. And then one day you get to do a show and you get to meet one of the area's biggest headliners, and he invites you to a barbecue. So now you're part of that, and that was one of the best times of my life in Boulder, when I was part of all three crews. I got to hang out with you know open micers on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then. Wednesdays and Thursdays, I, I hung out with guys that are feature acts, and and then little by little, boom, Comedy Works came, and I started doing guest spots, and blah, blah, blah. What's her same? name, Wendy, Comedy Works? Wendy She's is great. great. She's great. And uh, when I started going with the features, they were the wildest. The open micers were okay, but they went home, they had day jobs. The features got a little taste the of features something. that's what got, it was. The features snorted coke and got together after the fucking comedy gig. by the way not all of us do that but like yeah just the features if you these if were you were features, gonna take a percentage these were features were mcs guys that were going to not favorable places but we were in the game yeah these guys were in the game and they had bitches hanging around you mm -hmm. know little girls that hung around some of them wanted to be comics but i have a different message i'm working on it <laughs> the package will be together. It's more by, spoken word, yes, if you will. Yes, it's more spoken word with grenades going off. <laughs> you know, it's like Apocalypse Now meets fucking Wuhan. <laughs> What's a Chinese? Wuhan? Whatever the fuck. Mu oh, Mu shit. Mu 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 She's not Chinese, is she? I guess. I like I it. Know. My daughter was giving me an ear beating about Mulan. Mulan's great, so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you meet these girls and you snort coke with them and... and, and when I was first in Boulder, when I went back in 94, I just walked into nothing but trouble. Like, I walked into going to war with my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And then I knew a guy, and we were tight. And I knew his girlfriend, and they were tight, and they had a kid. And one night I saw her at an open mic, and she's like, I've been dying to talk to you. Me and him are done. I think it's me and you time to get together and... All of a sudden, I'm living in a hotel with her, the kid, <laughs> and an ounce of coke. And you know, and sounds like would, a fun day. He would come pick up the kid, I'd leave, Oy. and I'd come back. And it was just three months. And then finally, one day, he came to me. He goes, I'm trying to get back with her. Stop giving a stab and you're driving her crazy. Please. And I walked away from her. And then, you know, it was just it was just a life of fucking mayhem. Yeah. That people, the general eye does not understand that. It's just mayhem. Like one night we were talking at a bar, and two hours later we were having sex with coke and shit like that. And then uh, I didn't have any girlfriends. I swear to God, you didn't I, have any in like 19, friend in friend. Nineteen ninety five. Interesting. I didn't have a girlfriend. I had Eleanor, who texted me every ten days to see if I had blow, and I go, yeah. <laughs> Are you by yourself? Yeah, I yeah. am. Then come over. I like that you said Eleanor. Yeah, I've never done coke in with, my life. Don't be coming over here. I'll take a stabbing from the old don't, Diaz. Don't be coming over here with a friend. You know if you come to my oh, apartment Oh, I see alone, what you mean. Yes. And most guys do that. Yeah. Don't be bringing people. I only got coke for two people. 
And I said, this, I'm going to give you aspirin. Don't bring I'm a like, group. Uh, don't see, bring a group, bro. I'm going to see yeah, how yeah, fucked I get up. it. You know, it's just a, I see what you mean. Yeah, it yeah. It was a way of life. And I had three of those. So it was any week I could get a call from one girl on a Tuesday night when I was snorting. I'm just getting back from an open mic, you know. And then what do you think happens one day? I go to this comedy. Oh, we do Tuesday nights at the Comedy Works. And we're all there. The features, the MCs, the open mics, and they close it up and we're drinking. And you have to, at that time, it was like going into a coliseum and a girl, and one of the girls is like, Joey, and she jumps and she jumps at me and I grab her. I give her a hug. We go to the bar. Do we snort coke? No. Do we fuck? Do I try to fuck her? No. Three days later, I'm getting a call from Wendy. You got banned. You grabbed her ass. I go, ask her. I didn't grab her ass. Yes, you did. Then I came to find out the manager made up a lie, and they redeemed the other. And I bumped into Wendy's at the, one of the festivals. And she's like, I know you're mad at me. Well, I'm not mad at you. Why would I be mad at you? You saved my life. I would have been in jail for murder. Yeah. Because I would have killed my ex-wife, and look what you did. You fucking threw me out, and it was the God brought me here. And right. And here we are. And Wendy goes, you know what? I'm lifting the band because it was always bullshit anyway. So where there's smoke, there's fire. Do you understand yeah. me? Then you have a thing called the road. When you go on the road, if you don't believe me, don't look at, don't listen to me. Pick any artist you like and read their life on the road. Yeah, on the road. They're going to tell you that women come and go, and I don't know why they come and go. And at, at that age, you're not even thinking about it. You just got lucky. You don't have to deal with them again. You weren't looking to fall in love. Right. And you right. get in your car. And then I go to Seattle. Seattle, I'm up there with a girlfriend the whole time. So there was no outside. Uh, towards the end, I dated a little girl for a while that had a bad. Don't say little girl, bad, but yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Bad back acne. <laughs> oh, stop oh. it now. And every time I tried to hug her, the acne would be no. bad. And she would it have bleed? Acne. Oh, please. No, I she can't. had those little markings. You see this little tip that comes out of my stomach? What do you call those? Oh, yeah, like a little mole, mole. Uh, uh, skin tab. She had thousands kind of, of them on the back. Mm. Joey, that's like an oaf. That's a fucking so I moved to LA Shrek. Uh -uh. I moved with my girlfriend, and then we Shrek. broke up like in ninety fucking seven. She moved back to Michigan, mm -hmm. and I was out of here by myself. And my road got my tow, my car, my apartment got towed. Your and, apartment with your I, car? <laughs> yeah, I lived on Ralphie May's floor, mm. and here I am at the store. You know, did you live with Ralphie? I was I lived on this floor and I got okay. up and took a shower at the store at nine fifteen. Sure, in sure. The main room and so then, many uh, homeless people take a shower in the main room. And then I come back at seven fifteen and take another shower. Just Chewy would say, "Why are you here so early?" <laughs> I gotta look at something in the main room. I got. <laughs> Do you back remember? To, I had a bag with gel. Yeah. Foot stuff for my foot fungus. You take a shower at the store. <laughs> you gotta you be careful. You get foot fungus. Oh. Yeah. That shit. It goes comes right, with it. Yeah. Oh. Do you right remember Mac skin. Lindsay? Do you remember him? Yeah. Oh, he was so fucking funny. Where is he? He's in Texas, I think, right now. Awesome. But he was living in New York. And um, funny kid, funny on to something. So fucking. He was just crazy, a little deep obsessed. For the I love store. him. I loved him too. But he literally was like living out of a van in the back of the comedy store, and he would take a shower. But he wasn't quiet about it. Like, Mac wasn't the kind of guy that would just be quiet, like, whisper. So he would come out on the main room stage in a robe. There's no show going on. This is daytime. And the manager would walk in. What are you doing, Dean Gelber? Bro, what are you doing? And Mac would be like, taking a shower. But he'd have a robe. Like... <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy. It's unbelievable. It really was. It was, it was one it was... of my favorite people in the world. And again, I do not want to. Let's just go back to the three histories. The Laugh Factory really had no history in my life. It had a history of just a club. It's the very in... small, too. The, the improv, Laugh Factory. The improv's history was known for, let's be honest, as, as the improv was uh, Robin Williams, uh, Bud Friedman, Evening at the Improv. Sure. Uh, Why are you giving him Robin? I mean, I, I like mean, it, uh, but let's just, this I hear is, what you're saying. I, I can't think of the guy's name right now. They had a certain... They, they had were, a certain... Now, Seinfeld. They, yes, they preferred they a working comic. To a certain comic. But the comedy store, since the night I was reading the Belushi thing. Oh, yeah. And De Niro and Robin Williams were at Mario and Charlie's up the corner where the union became. Where, where did... Where did Dean, Dean came to become the king with 
Oh, Dane Cook. The uh, um, Jesus, what the hell was it called, Jay? The Dublins. The Dublins. My God, I'm Irish. It was Dublins. It was called Mario and something. Okay. And there was a hangout, and mm-hmm. they also did comedy there. And De Niro and Robin Williams. And the bungalows no. are right there. De Niro. Uh, Fuck Nut was across the street at the bungalows, Belushi. Belushi. Shooting coke. And I like to say Robin and De Niro walked to the comedy store to see if Pryor was there. Yes. To walk back to do coke with Belushi in that room. Yeah. Pryor had left with the Pointer Sisters. and And he walked over. They walked over there and found the cocaine. Right there as a child. My curiosity opened up. Yeah, you're like, store. wait, this is the legendary. The went to the comedy store. Yeah. And then, you know, before I lived in Se- when I lived in Seattle, somebody gave me the the fucking uh, Kennison book. Oh. Uh, the biography by Kennison. I, if you just read Wired by, uh, I can't remember, everybody's in it. It's all about SNL. Right, SNL. Wild. Right. Why? So you you read all this shit. So this isn't new to people. And you hear this shit. For me, from what I had heard, the beatings, the Angel Salazars, the Kennisons, the girlfriends, the abortions, the Mitzi, the you way name of it. it. I chose the comedy store. The comics I had worked with on the road, from James Stevens the Third to Louis C K to at that time Doug Stanhope. Douglas. All these guys were like, the store is waiting for you. And I'm like, really? And they're like, people would ask me two things from day one. Has Sharipa met you? And has Mitzi met you? Since day one. Yeah. Those are the two people. But people always ask me if I knew. But I feel like the store, it's so big. And it was so easy to get lost in there. And there were so many dark corners, if you will. Now, you were there in 93. What was the store in 93? Well, when I, like I said, when I first got there... I was I was new. I was like, okay, what is this? You know, it was wild. And we had they had just had the uh, 92 riots. They had just had that Rodney King. The, all that nonsense was just happening. I remember my mother being like so nervous, like there's riots. I'm like, yeah, but it's I'm sure it's like Philadelphia. You know, what am I going to be afraid of L.A.? I'm from Philly. We have the same shit, whatever. So I remember going and we had uh, Monday nights was the all black night. Eddie Griffin ran a room. Uh, every room was all black shows, which was great. Like they were fun, but they were wild. And they were wild in that, like they would always, I remember my friend Gabrielle, uh, she, somebody said to her, uh, hey, can you bring a drink to so-and-so? And they said the name and she brought a drink and here it was a gang rival and a, a big brawl broke out in the OR. It was awful. And Gabrielle was just like crawling out of there. This is like this gorgeous blonde. They used to call her Susie Chapstick every single time we worked together in a black room. So whatever. Was, but Gabrielle could hold her own. So she didn't care. But we were, they to rip the uh, ashtray off the wall. We used to have those metal ashtrays. Remember those? Fucking wung it at her. Like it was wild. So my idea was like, okay, this is like being in the streets. Do you know what I mean? Like, fuck, there's urban shows. I just go right back to that mindset. Then there was a shootout. Then Mitzi got nervous. Tupac was there. That, that, not that shoot, night. Not that Not this that's one. Not the Tupac. That's another shooting. And they blamed Eddie <laughs> There's been Griffin. a few of those. Um, this so the wasn't... reputation was bad. Yeah. Because when I came here in 96, the guy, I came down here to audition, and I stayed in Studio City, real close to here. I still see the guy around town that I stayed with. Wow. He did a favor for a friend of a friend. He was a writer on Mad TV. He was very nice to me. He took me. I mean, oh, okay. I stayed with him, and he, him and his wife showed me hospitality. They took me to the Japanese arsons. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Up the corner. There used to be a Japanese place where he'd sing on the table and karaoke. <laughs> I don't want to work. I don't want to play on these. Jungle. I wouldn't go there. It was like Musso and Frank's, the Japanese <laughs> tours. They had a line out there. Not and Miss people, Sally's. I mean, no, that's no, another right singing. There. I mean, okay. Right, right near the store? Oh, oh, no, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going. Japanese Got joint it. in the valley. What the fuck was it? They burnt it down. It was called Tokyo need... Dells. Tokyo Dells. Oh, wow. They I never heard of that. They took me to Tokyo Dells. Very nice. 
I showcased, and I still remember going, he goes, is there anything you'd want to do after you showcase? Because he drove me down to the Laugh Factory. You showcased at the, the Laugh Factory? Factory for the Latino Laugh Festival. Oh, okay. In 96. Makes sense. Yeah. And I didn't meet anybody. It was very cold. I was like, man, this place <laughs> is fucked up. And I had two connections. Real weird. I had the connection of my friend that uh, Ron hooked me up with that took me to the Laugh Factory. Okay. And I, and I drove from Seattle. Okay, so you, you're by yourself. 18 hours straight. Ooh, wow. But then when I was at the Laugh Factory, I had excused the guy who drove me down, and he waited while I went to the deli next door. What's the deli next to the Laugh Factory? The uh, Greenblatt. And spoke to a friend of mine that my Goomba in Jersey, his wife, her brother, was in like five movies. Oh, and okay. So I met with him, and he's like, here's the advice I got to give you. Come back, you go into this acting class. He was Everything's like, he was a like fucking us. acting class. He was like us. He was just a working stiff, and he had gotten into a hot movie with... John Van Claude Dome, whatever his name is. John Vaude. John Claude Van Damme. John Claude Van, Van Damme. It was about a time machine. How high am I? It was about a time machine or something. Well, it only makes and sense. He did yeah. really good in it. But this, the, the real thing why I met him was he was Jason Scott Lee's, Jason Bruce Lee's son's oh. roommate for two years. And he had become dear friends with him. Wow. So I went to meet with him to talk about that. We just talked about a lot of things. He's your kung fu guy. Yeah, yeah he that's told you. Me, he told me all this dumb shit. He told shit me you invented about, it? No. Uh -huh. He told me all this dumb shit about Hollywood to avoid. Oh. If I moved down here and to call him when I came down here. And years later, he called me. He goes, what the fuck? You're doing better than I am. I go, yeah. <laughs> thank you for taking me to yeah. lunch. Because he, had, he went dead after that movie. Then I moved down here, started putting commercials and TV right, shows. Right. Like, I'm watching you everywhere. What the fuck? <laughs> Isn't that weird? I should have <laughs> charged you for that talk. <laughs> you know. But I went to the store and I knew it was home. It was dark. The land of misfit toys. I, I felt something weird in there. And then we have to go back to Sundays and Mondays where I used to host for Mitzi. They'd give me a list of the yeah. people I call in. Were I'd we just Mondays at that point? At that point, it was Sundays. I, I mean, I'm sorry, just Sundays. Because she, get, it was Mondays. She moved it because of Monday Night Football. Getting off flights and going straight to the store with my luggage. Right. And putting it in the waitress station, mm -hmm. washing <laughs> my face, washing my hands, and going and doing 10 to 11. She dug me. She gave me the $25 door spot. Sure. From eight to ten, and then you did the I, door spot. Fuck yeah! No, I, I don't think I remember you on the door. Nobody does. <laughs> How long a, did it last? About a year and a half. It was like a thank you for hosting. It was a little extra something for you. Would you actually stand at the door? I would stand at the you door would? and bust people's balls. Let me see your ID. What was the date of your birth? What country front, you were born? Front in? in the front. The back. I was the. You dog. were the OR back. Yes. Wow. So at ten o'clock, I relieved that to somebody. That post disappeared. I picked up a check for twenty five. I like that you had your own thing going on. Please. The post. <laughs> but was I don't even girl. know what that means. <laughs> and then I'd go host at ten twenty five. Now again, I got the small twenty five to host. Do you think? You got less than that on the door, right? Or was I it 25? I got 25 on the door and, and 25, 25 to, host. to host. So it's 50. Yeah, 50, yeah. 50. 50. 50. <laughs> oh, you mean Qum together? 50, yeah. Qum. <gasps> oh, so right? you, you I, would get walk, 25 to host. I'd walk 50. I'd walk out of Sundays with 50 bucks. Okay. Now, so Joey didn't have it any easier. I said, let me throw an extra kick on this. <laughs> Why am I up here arguing with these guys that are never going to get a spot? Yeah. Even if God wants them to, because <laughs> Mitzi's going to scratch. Oh, no. These motherfuckers. And even if you slept with Mitzi, it wasn't dog, a guarantee to get a pitched, spot. You could have pitched the tent out there and been number one since Sunday. Fucking going, I'm going to be number one. That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I would get on the phone and call Mooney, Eddie, and Joe Rogan. And go, I don't know if you know I'm hosting tonight. And you come out and try out all your new material. It's my favorite. And Andrew, come on down. Really? What time? 
that they're a 10 to fucking 10. I'm surprised some open micers haven't killed you. They don't, they don't know about it. <laughs> so they'd be there going, yes. They would be calling their homes, the whole thing. Like, I'm getting on stage at the store. It was comics who weren't getting stage time that Mitzi looked at and said, you know what? I made a mistake. That's what it really was. She, By the way, that's she told still me exists. once. Yeah. She told me once. She goes, these are comics I made a mistake with, and I don't want them around here no more. And the only way to get rid of them is to not to put them up on Sundays because I don't want to give them a false hope. Unless I hear something spectacular from Scott at the time. Scott Day, yeah. She goes, I'm not playing games with these people. But this is hey, but this is when a thousand people are trying to get to the store, dog. Yeah, right. even even more so than now. Your like, wait list now, was six fucking months. And you could and if she saw you six months ago and she saw you again, you thought, oh, I'll just do the same shit. Fuck you. Bye. She remembered every she remembered word, every you, word said. you said. So when I did that, I would call Mooney, whatever, and I would all of a sudden I'd have Mooney and Dice up yeah, there. Yeah, can you imagine every doesn't three look, minutes you have to change the comment? Oh, and you got to walk up and down the stairs. <laughs> Trust me, I hosted for like cocaine. three years. Come yeah. on, I'm on coke. <laughs> I'm going to be walking up wasting coke. <laughs> you know, I need this energy. So I would like put up, I would do yeah. ten, uh, four steps. Wait till <laughs> you, you do that four step. Thing. I, did it, Every I night. did it three years ago. They hated me. I was there. I was there. You they oh, hated you redid me. It. Yeah, I and can't. I couldn't walk for four days after that. Those days are done with. Up and down. This ain't no tax fit class. No <laughs> it really thing. is the best way to grow, though. It oh, is the best way to grow. It's it took me. It, it, Mitzi was nice enough to let me when I first started doing stand up after being a waitress for so long, and she hated when a waitress turned comic. Let me tell you something. She fucking hated that because I, hate I watched it too, and I would be like, Ugh, and then they fucking get on stage in front of her, and she'd be like, get red of them and i'd be like all right so i had to fire plenty of waitresses who stunk on stage so it's so sun, bad sunday nights i get off that stage and everybody would be depressed fuck <laughs> you know how long andrew's gonna do he's gonna do till one so I, I, <laughs> you, you're doing truth. two more albums what's the truth go down the corner go you're wasting all this energy to get back in here. yeah she's not gonna you could have wrote an back. hour you could have done so many things, and I understand the pain you had. But now, let's eliminate that. Let's take back. But why not go where w w go where people fuck with you? Like if if the comedy store doesn't like you, go somewhere, go somewhere else. else. There's a million other fucking places. That's it. Never when stay time, in one spot. When it's time, you'll be here. Yeah. But right now, don't mess with. It. Now, let's talk about the second part of this. <laughs> in the video, I spoke about 23 years ago what was going on up there. For women. Now, Eleanor hasn't sucked a dick, to my knowledge, and I've known her for years. I and mean, if a, I would confront lot, her, she would tell me to get stage time. Oh. Whitney Cummings didn't no. suck a dick. Ali Wong didn't suck a dick. You know, Eliza didn't suck a dick. I'm not saying they haven't sucked a dick somewhere in their personal lives. You know how many people say to me, Whitney fucked everybody to get? Yeah. And I go, what are you talking I was talking right there about? in the trenches with would, her. You know what I'm saying? Like, people will tell you out of jealousy. And it's a jealousy created by other women. I agree. Okay? It's a jealousy created by other women. When I got back to the store, like I said last week, before we even said this, there was a rumor going around that women weren't getting stage time. So when you see me looking at the list, I'm not looking at the list to see what time it is. I'm sure, reading the list counting. to count. <laughs> and I would count and go, I don't know what these women are talking about. So to at least lessen the burden... I started putting more women on my podcast, more women that yeah. nobody would know about, just to lease in that. Okay, that's great, Joey. You did that. You're a great guy. Fuck, you're going to be a saint. Let's not get away from the situation. We're but you, you're the men. kind of person, you don't care about gender. You're, funny is funny. Funny is funny. And, that's and, it. and I want to give a spotlight, the same spotlight people gave me. Sure. The way Rogan gave me a spotlight and Richard Jenny gave me a spotlight. You forget right. Andrew took me to Vegas. Oh no, I didn't. These forget. are all spotlights. Yeah. These are all spotlights. These are you have to be very thankful of these. Mm -hmm. So, but let's talk about ninety seven to two thousand. I had never seen more of a collection of crazier people <laughs> in my life, and I tell you guys how it is. This, what came close? The Tenderloin in eighty five, when I lived there for that summer came close to my first year at the store. My first What's year the at tenderloin? the tenderloin? San Francisco. Oh, oh. My first okay. year at the store was Peter Chen, the guy who they said I killed 
that disappeared, the old man. Oh, Gilbert, uh, whatever. it'll Gilbert, come to me. Yeah, Gilbert yeah. Godfrey, he's alive. He's alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Gaylord. Peter, Gaylord Dingler hitting the guy with the car. <laughs> and then there's a situation of women that went up there on Sunday nights. Now, again, I am not downplaying what I said on with Rogan. I'm not downplaying it. I just want to give you guys a back pedal. Okay? Nobody lied. Nobody exaggerated. It was just told in a quick way. And this is my witness right here. We just spoke about the original room for the last 30 minutes. I never even did sex in the belly room. Nobody That's does. That's just to show you. <laughs> I mean, I do. I love time, it. But at that time, that it was time, weird. It was weird. Adam. Uh, Adam Barnhart had Barnhart, a great, has a great show nights. on Sunday nights. And that's it. Nobody else had a show up there. And so well, we, it was Rachel Lovey. She Rachel used to have Lovey, three shows. But yeah. it was more, again, geared toward women. Like so, Rachel had great comp. So Marilyn is, did it. This Everybody. is just to prove to you people that when you tell a story, you get caught up in a story. Sure. There were, Skippy Love. There were different with Skippy Love. <laughs> there were different women that went up there on Sundays. We could mention names. I remember one in particular God. that had a pink convertible Mercedes. Do not say her name. I'm never going to say her name, but and I know she exactly who you're talking pits, about. But the guy, the old man she was living with was like 70. Something like that. And he would buy everything, her promo packages, dresses. and But the tits he got, the doctor in Mexico forgot to move the vein under I'm the dead. fake tit. I hate you. And put the, tit, the vein over the tit. <laughs> And it looked so bad. But there was, there was, ladies and gentlemen, and I have two daughters, I have 10 nieces, and I have 200 women that I'm dear friend with. And yeah. I'm looking at you in the eye, and I'm telling you to correct me if I'm lying to you. There was six or seven women in those days that didn't want to do Whitney's work. They didn't want to do the work. They didn't want to put the leg did. work in. Mm -mm. They didn't want to put the leg work in. And they'd taunt you, and they'd say things to you, and they'd start with they guilt. They were looking for shortcuts. They'd start with guilt. Yeah. Well, you have this, and I don't have this, and you're so lucky, and why can't you put me up in front of Mitzi and blah, 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 blah. And it never, you know, for me, it never understood. Nobody ever came out beside that girl and said, how about I trade your blowjob for stage time? And it was the weirdest thing because I had had a sexual relationship with her before. I oh, had okay. met her a year earlier and we would hook up once a month on a weird situation. Once we actually hooked up in an apartment. Yeah. She came over and she goes. But she partied too. Yeah. She goes, I'm just eight. making sure I got the she same She goes, I got person. eight packages. Yeah. Okay. And she goes, I want to And I'm not party. hating her for any of this, no, by the way. No, neither am I. Yeah. I love her with all my heart. Like we joke about these girls make comedy yeah. better for a lot of people. Yeah, so she said, I've got these eight packages. I bought them from, and I want to do them. And I said, I have an 1145 spot. And it's a good she goes, spot. No, but I have to go now. It's a Friday night. And I'm like, Oof, that spot could wait. I'm a little burnt out on stand up. <laughs> I was opening up for Paul Rodriguez on Saturday and Sunday and Fresno and Bakersfield okay. with Bob. Uh, Bill, Bob. Bob Baker? Uh, no. Baker uh, South? No. The guy that ran Houston at the time was doing independent contact, con, uh, concerts. Oh. And I, I said, know. I never forget looking at her in the eye and going, <sighs> I got an 1145 spot. If I go home with you, I just want you to know we ain't fucking around. I'm going to put you to work. And she goes, what does that mean? And I go, we're going to do coke. So obviously somewhere along the night, we're going to want to fuck. It's going to get out of control. It's going to get wild. And she's like, well, okay, fine. She goes, I just don't give good enough head. And I'm like, like already, I'm like. You know, That's hysterical. She goes, you have to teach me how to give head. <laughs> you know? Okay. And I went over there. And she, oh, all right. And she was a professional. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And. And we spent that night together. And there was a couple of nights at the store. Okay. And then she was frustrated. She was, and I get it. She was frustrated. She was frustrated, not with me, because she was getting beat up everywhere. At that time, mm -hmm. she was getting beat up at the improv. She was getting beat up at open mics. But you talk about clicky. It was Comedy's very clicky. clicky. It was very it's clicky. Very and it's clicky. hard to get in clicks. It's still clicky. 
And she came to the store one night distraught. And I'm like, I got two lines of coke in me. I already went up on stage. <laughs> you know, you came at the perfect time. What's going on? And she's like, uh, it's not going to happen again between us. I have a boyfriend. And then she started saying that we don't even have sex. We lay next to each other and my positive vibes go into his positive vibes. And we don't need to have sex. It's so yesterday. Oh, this is a new way of doing sex, and I have the best spoken or- word the in best, the bedroom. I have the best <laughs> orgasms in my life, and, and I'm listening to this shit going. Uh, all right, listen, what's the problem? And she's like, I just want somebody to see me, and I'm like, Who would you want to see? You? And she's like, I don't know, a management team. There used to be a payphone next to the woman's bathroom in the hallway when you walk down the stairs sure. at the thing. And I remember looking at it going, so who, who, who do you want me to call? I don't know. It's 1030 at night. Who would you want me to call? And she's like, I don't know. Who's the best manager? And I go, three yards. And I went into my pocket. And I got a quarter. And I put it in the payphone. And you could see me hanging up. And I just dialed seven numbers. I'm like, three yards, give me such and such. <laughs> and it's at night. And it's at night. And she's looking at me like, she didn't see me hang up the phone. I'm saying everybody do better, okay? okay so <laughs> everybody. I go to her. I go, listen, I'm standing here with whatever her name is. She wants you to see her. When's the next time you're doing a showcase? Tuesday at the store. I go, you're available Tuesday at the store. Not by now. Any smart girl would say, give me the phone. Fuck you. Let me talk, Let me to, talk to somebody. No. She's like, why can't you Tuesday at 8? And I go, Tuesday at 8, be at the store. Bitch, you could do every day at 8. And I just hung up the phone, (laughs) took the quarter out from the bottom. I thought we all seen this. And next thing you know, we're in the belly room bathroom upstairs. Which is a hot spot. And I remember we had, like, sex, and she had, like, dirty fingernails. And I'm like, I'm going to go home and take a good shower. I didn't even have a good house at that time. (laughs) I lived in a fucking car. So... So that's the unrated, under-embellished... That's the under-embellished, unrated... Got I had it. sexual relations with her. Yeah, how many times? Maybe 20. How many other women that I did this to? None of them. But I will remember there was a meek Japanese girl oh. that came in for a while. <laughs> meek. meek. They usually are the Japanese. God bless them. She, no, but she just got ladies. out of a war. Like in her oh, world, shit. she had the straw hat. <laughs> With the cup of rice, and she was coming at the store, and she had grown up being a fan of Tamayo Atsuko. Tamayo Atsuki. So she's like, I want to be Tamayo. I want to be Tamayo. You know, tell me. And I, and I was kind of nice to her. Oh, my God. I was very nice to her. Yeah. This is the shit that you don't tell people, <clears throat> that people need to know. Yeah. I was very kind to her. And after about three weeks, her dress started getting more and more. Japanesey, which means they started wearing less and less clothes. She started wearing monster boots with hot pants. Oh, less there. Japanese. I got it. No okay, bra, yeah. Yeah. I see. T-shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. little bite-sized titties sticking out. And I'm seeing this shit. <laughs> Trial and, size. Uh, just to let you know that, you know, there's a good side and a bad side to Joey Diaz. This is one girl that actually pretty much came to me in Japanese. And said to me, in other words, you know, I do, you know, whatever, stage time. And I, I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and, I, you know, I said, you know what? Tonight I'm full. Like, I'm okay tonight. Like, I'm, I'm coked up. It's not going to yeah. work tonight. And I'll never forget, though. Like, a month later, they were running a train behind the stage and the bar by her at, like, 11 o'clock. And the male bartender was like, what am I going to do? She went, she went back there with both of them for stage time. You know, I saw situations like that. There was a girl that would come down every Sunday with a wig on. One of the prettiest girls you've ever seen in your life. And I caught on to her after like a month. I go, weren't you a redhead a month ago? Yeah, well, I just like to switch wigs. And I would stand in the front. Remember, I was a doorman. So I would stand in the front sometimes. And she always got out of black cars. Those in fucking nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Those black yeah, cars that's were weird. expensive. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. That was a big deal. If somebody pulls up in a yeah, limo a now, limo. you laugh at yeah. them. You're like, yeah, whatever. But no, not the limos. But just <laughs> but the town I know cars, what you mean, yeah. like the town, just cars. The town cars. Yeah, the sedans. And one that I asked, I go, what are you doing? She goes, ah, oh, you wouldn't understand. 
And I remember her like pulling me aside going, I really want to be a stand-up comedy, but nobody will help me. Listen, when you tell a, a seasoned comedian, and again, if you want to write for Rolling Stone or whatever you want to take with this podcast, remember one thing. When a woman comes to you in comedy and says, I don't know what to do and I need help. Seven out of ten comics, what do they say to you? I got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry about none. Let's go back to like my apartment. And nine out of ten of them jokes. are full of shit. And nine out of ten of them are full of shit. And then when they realize they don't sleep with you, they're not your friend. They don't talk to you. Yeah. I always try to talk to those women. You know, I, uh, you grow in comedy and you see the weaknesses. And like I told you guys last week, one night, Lee and I were coming back from Pasadena. And we started talking about my triple shit. Oh, the triple runs. I've and, never done that. what but, I yeah. saw on the triple runs. People, it's just crazy stories, yeah. And I remember that I got off out of the car with him and my body was shivering. Because it was just crazy. Like, the shit yeah. that, you know, finger in this one. <laughs> there was a fucking Air Force base. But and, yeah, it's like, whatever. I don't. There was a comedy show called The Degenerates of Comedy. You did it. Why did they call like did any of the comics get offended? You called us degenerate. We are. For the most part, we are. We're Plus, fucking animals on the road for the I mean, I can't say that about women all the time because like we're on the road a little bit more nervous than a male comic, of course, ten times over. And it's still a bar. It's a bar. It's that, a nightclub. That, 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 that They're partying. It it still doesn't matter. It doesn't excuse what I did next week. And it's not going to excuse what's about to happen in the next couple of weeks. Because they made a lot of calls. Uh, and you know what? And it's, I didn't people. get one fucking call. You know no, why? No, no. Because I wouldn't push a negative narrative. No. And that's what they want. They want anything. Negative. They want anything negative. You know, I would love. I wish people address it, you know, in the right way. I haven't remembered, you know. I had to look back and go, well. I think of a couple situations, one of one which I spoke of the podcast. I'm not going to tell the name to give you ammunition. I spoke of a person I had a problem with when I first met her. We were doing a couple lines of coke, and I told her she had nice titties. And she played it off like, you know, nobody's ever told me this before. You're a pig, really? Well, this oh, is I love I, shock. I love this shock. This is what I know about you. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, I go to a party, and I see it with somebody, and it's like... You were trying to play fucking Virgin Mary, <laughs> and you got busted. I'm not afraid of. But I, that's just what I'm saying. Like everybody right now feels like they're all in shock. Like, oh my god, this oh my happens god. at I, nightclubs. I oh my god, I, what does I comics have, talk dirty? Comics gotten, embellish. I Fuck you. Emails that it would it would make you fucking. I die will be laughing. listen. I will be. Not one person <clears throat> has called me. About anything from the oh, comedy no, no. store, and I've been they're there not from calling anybody who matters. Well, but here's the thing: I've been there calling, from. Not, I don't have any credits like that. Everybody who, I mean, I've heard in these articles and these interviews that Adam's name has come up, and I don't know why. Uh, this is crazy. Adam Engel's name has come up. Who's the sweetest guy in the world? Adam, our Adam, the our Adam. His what did you call him? Adam Engel. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Adam Egit. Egit, whatever it's called. eBay. Just call him eBay. I don't know how many people's names have come up that I've said, what are you talking about? Why is his name? Because if he, it, 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 here's the thing. Like back in the day, girls would come up to me and be like, how do I get spots? How do I get spots? How do I get a showcase? How do I get whatever it was? Like whether they were passed and not getting spots or whether they were trying to get past, right? Because both happen. When you can get past, like Mitzi said, she would be like, ugh, fuck, I made a mistake on that after I saw him. And she'd stop giving them spots. One person, one guy, got really pissed off and went to Mitzi and was like, why am I not getting spots? And she goes, okay, I'll have you re-showcase. And then she unpassed that motherfucker mm. for, making him sit, for making her sit through that. And it was the only person I ever saw her do that to, but it made me laugh. So I would immediately tell people, don't talk to Mitzi if you've been passed. Here's little tricks you can do. Like and it was something as simple as send Scott some tequila or That's wine. What I did. Yeah, I would tell people all the time send cigarette whatever it was that the the town coordinator could casually bring your name up in front of Mitzi and spark her memory. Whether it's good or bad, it'll work, and it did. So then people would say, "How can I get spots? Should I fuck this guy? This guy told me if I blow him, 
that he'll help me. And I go, who would help you if you, no, he's going to come and forget you. And I go, if, if you want to know who to fuck to get into the club, if it's not Mitzi Shore, you're doing it wrong. Cause she's the only one that can put you on stage up until she got real, real sick. And Tommy started, there was one time when me and Corey, one week where Mitzi was real sick in the late nineties. And she was, she went to get stem cell injections. I think Bob uh, Wheeler took her and she was, you know, it was her first like bout with this bullshit, her sickness. And so she asked us to do the lineup and we, Corey and I were devastated, nervous wreck. We didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We love everybody. So we copied Mitzi's format. That was one week. We still weren't in charge of anything, really. We just copied Mitzi's format. And then if I, we joke about this all the time, or at least Rick and I do on the Comedy Store podcast, how when she came back and started doing it, she literally would just go to A's. So the, the it would be like Aaron Cater, Ahmed Ahmed, like she, whoever was fucking A's got on the lineup. Because she was getting, her health was declining. So then Tommy, Duncan left, Tommy got in there, and then once he saw that she was really, really declining and he started doing the lineup, he would then, unfortunately, fuck with people. And, you know, well, you know, if you do this, you know, he had his own narrative and his favorites were Whitney and Crystalia. And Mitzi didn't pass them. Tommy did, technically, like whatever. And because he saw these are going to be the future or whatever. He saw something in them. And he was passionate. And he was a dick to a lot of people. He was. But he was the talent coordinator. And technically, she gave him the reins to do that. And the only other person that had that was Adam because he was thrown into it. But Adam showcases people. He doesn't give sexual fucking favors for getting stage time. And he doesn't not give you stage time if you didn't give him or don't like him. Because I've had people come up to me and be like, he doesn't like me. He doesn't... Yeah, he doesn't like your stand-up. You, you're taking a personal. Like, you, you, he asked you out and you said no. And now you think that's why you're not getting Say You're not funny. You need to fucking reevaluate. Or you could be funny, but just maybe he doesn't think you're funny enough for the lineups he's putting together. And if you're fucking hurt by that, fuck you. I'm sorry. Would you go to every casting director and be like, how did I not get in this movie? I'm perfect for it. And then just be like, well, be, it's because... I, I was supposed to go out with him or I was supposed to go out with her and now they're holding a grudge. That's not how it works. I, I don't know. I'm rattling, but I'm pissed. That's no, why. No, you're absolutely right. Because I'm pissed. It, it, it's like you're, 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 changing, you're changing the narrative. First of all, what, with what is going on with Chris D'Elia, I'm like I said, I'm thrilled these girls spoke up, right? And if he did something bad, that will fucking come out. It will happen. You will get your justice. But don't change it and take away from something that needs to be dealt with for real because you didn't get fucking spots at the comedy store. Stop it. And not one person has come to me and said, no, that's not true because you know that. Because they know I know the real truth. I, I watched it. Even with Adam, I've been doing stand-up for 13 years. Adam took over probably, what, uh, six years ago, seven years ago, six-ish, seven? Yeah. So, And he was thrown into it reluctantly. He did not want to do this. He did not want that job. Nobody wants that fucking job. Nobody wants the job of telling you're good enough to get on this lineup or you're not, man or woman. And the other thing is, is with the women, they're trying to fucking – men and women are all the same where there is no gender but but then when there's a fucking problem all of a sudden there's a gender right all of a sudden these are males are monsters and they, they're trying to hurt women and not all male males are assholes i have six brothers i would say some of them are assholes some of them aren't you know whatever i i don't i'm I again I'm, real. I'm flipping out because i just don't I'm know just, what i'm just happy that you were there in 97 to 2000. 
you witnessed me, you witnessed me at my lowest points on drugs. Yeah, and to say I fucked my way in. I've heard that one, too, because I slept with Dice. That's my second ex-fiance. I wasn't even doing stand-up when I was with Dice. And and when I started doing stand-up, respectfully, because he was the higher-up, technically, not because he's male, just because he's fucking Andrew Dice Clay, and he started at the comedy store. So when I started doing it, I called him and I called Mitzi. Because I have respect for them and I didn't want them to think, oh, I'm fucking crazy. I'm going to go there because I'm Dice's ex and I'm going to fuck with him and stay at the store. Or, uh, you know, I'm an ex waitress and I want to fucking piss off Mitzi by doing stand up. I didn't do it for the wrong reasons. I called them to say, hey, I'm going to try this. Is this okay if I come to the store? I I asked permission and Mitzi let me. she, She told me to do the belly room. Uh, and I did. And then she sh- showcased, I-, I showcased three or three times for Mitzi. It took me three years to get past. And I was her personal assistant. I did everything. For- I went out of the country with Mitzi. Like we were tight. So, and then with Andrew, he took me on the road and I didn't do, I got booed off the stage and he put me in the fucking back burner for a year. And then I had a re showcase for him. So don't tell me I didn't do the fucking legwork and that I fucked my way into a comedy store paid regular because I'll beat the shit out of you. One, two, I worked my ass off for it. Everything I got. And, and there's a lot of women that they talk like that about. And one of them is Whitney Cummings that came, somebody said it to me and I thought, fuck you, man. We I were in the works. same show. She that said bitch something to me. Worked every, I wake up and I say, what would Whitney do? That's how I fucking think. Whether you like her stand up or not. Do I think Whitney's the funniest person on the planet? No, but I think she's fucking brilliant. And she puts her time in. And it. she puts her puts fucking her time, time in and busts her goddamn ass. She wasn't. She was sleeping with regular fucking guys like the rest of us. Nobody special. I can think of four, not four, three different guys that she was dating. They were regular fucking guys. They weren't. They didn't have any power. She was just smarter than you, and you don't fucking like it. She said something to me that made sense for you, Eliza. Eliza Allie too. Wong. Eliza's fucking great. Ali Wong. Wong. She said, Leslie Jones. Who the fuck did Leslie, Leslie fuck? Jones. Leslie's phenomenal. She said, "When you come to this town you, and you go to the comedy store, you have two decisions. Mm-hmm. You can either suck dick or put your ponytail under the hat and become one of the guys." Yeah, and you've done that. You're one of the guys. I've tucked you my. You know dick. why? Because mm-hmm. you had nine brothers, <laughs> and you know exactly how they talk. They scratch their balls. Sure. They sniff their fingers. They're, They're monsters. Disgusting. But I love they them. They would tell you right in front of them how they fucked the neighbor in the ass. In Fuck the yeah. She was half retarded. Fuck if and I said fuck, I... Yeah. <laughs> and you laughed a little bit. But that was what, uh, you know, that they said coerced. There was no need to coerce nobody. Nobody coerced. These that girls were girl willing. God bless me. them. I mean, and there was many others, and I've heard many other stories. And like I said, I'm not here with this podcast. Now the next step is where this goes. Where does this go? If it goes any further, it's dumb. I got to be honest. It's going to go further. It's going to go further. Well, they're going to pick apart every person. Anybody that's ever laughed at Richard Pryor should be executed then. He grew up in a whorehouse. It's going to go further. And that's how he saw women. It's going to go further. And at least for me, it is. uh, They made some calls. They called Seattle. You know, oh, were they worried you have a fucking past? You're pretty Boulder. open about it. Oh, I am. They're going after clubs for certain reasons for not doing. I heard this in an email. A stricter background checks in the comics to make sure they're not sexual predators. Like now they have us. They have. Oh a, my god! How the fuck are we going to pre- prevent that? I'm about the Wednesday, I celebrate 20 years with my girlfriend. When you saw us, at Terry, the, yeah, uh, my girlfriend, it's your wife, fucker. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> in my head, I was but like... But we've been together 20 years. Wow. You know? So you got to remember, when I started dating Terry, I was still snorting coke. <laughs> but I was at the store, and I couldn't really do nothing, because now she'd know it. She was right there watching me. Yeah. So for you motherfuckers that want to say something... And you, Terry don't fuck around. Terry don't fuck around. Terry was the... If I worked five nights... Terry worked five nights. She will fuck you up, Jack. If that's I my girl. That's why nights, I love Terry. Like Terry worked five nights. <laughs> I, I need a little a national anthem real quick today because there's something we got to talk about. People are having do's and knots and Whoa. dots. 
We got to do some national anthem. I don't know. Any dates coming up? No, you fuckers. They canceled everything. No, not till SIP. Uh, no, I'm in. Um, when is it? Shit. August 6th. I'm at Phoenix at the House of Comedy. Good for August. You. But that's okay. not till August. Okay. My July date got canceled in Vancouver. You tweet so. it and we'll retweet it. I love it. Thank you so much. And uh, no, I'm happy to have you on today because I want to. Sorry understand. if I went off a little bit. I'm no, just, I you get were there. Off. Okay, you were there. My wife was there, so well, I want to see t- Terry. What the fuck they're gonna come up with? Because I got a thousand stories of just I got a so million. raw. That Call listen, me. whatever story you want to come up with, there's got to be a back end to it. About six months ago, I get home way before COVID, November. Okay. And some girl who lost, you know who it is. She's a cute blonde girl. She was married to an owner of a comedy club. And I always considered her a dear friend. I saw her at the Ha Ha when I was trying to make a comeback. And I wasn't going to the store. And one night I go on Twitter on a Saturday. It's got to be 1130. And I read her tweet, which says, Joey once went into a bathroom in the back of a bus while I was in the bathroom. And I thought about it for a second, and I go, holy shit. That's right. In 98, we were doing a Roger Paul gig. Oh, wow. the back of the bus, and I had to go to the bathroom. And when she found out I had a package, she asked me if I would do a package. So I usually do a package in the bathroom. So I go, you didn't mention we were doing a package. You're just going to put all, all of a sudden. All That's why we're sudden. only going to put out half the story. Yeah, half the Everything's half story. the fucking story. So I was like, fuck, you know. Fuck this shit, and I wrote to have a package. So I know that, uh, you know, what They're trying to leave it out to make but them look again, good. We got 20 years right here. I got 20 years where I've been with at the house. My wife was a waitress at the store. So and she can attest to. you motherfuckers want to raise your hand. Come on with it, bitches. There was a friend of ours who recently died, a big guy. Mm-hmm. His wife became a saint all of a sudden. She doesn't <laughs> She doesn't know no, she fucking, she's trash. She's spitting the grave before she they also threw got dirt smacked on around at the store. Yeah, mm-hmm. she got smacked around a couple places. So for her to raise, yeah, but from me, from me, that's yeah, time. That's this the, time. But this, this is the thing with Terry. Terry was there when we were all. Just so you know, uh, the cesspool, the comedy world is, world and is a there. nightclub becomes when you're there all the time. There was a part where we had a, a herpes outbreak. Because we were all fucking each other. And uh, I'm a, well, I wasn't really in that part, but I was in that. And we all had to go get tested for herpes. And I don't want this to reflect on the store or any other place. No, no, no. I'm saying every this nightclub is, this has is a this. bar, yes. This Are we going to close every nightclub? We love. There was a lot of love there. There still is a lot of love there. You know, I feel bad for Delia and all this when we have to go back. But these stories the we're talking about. Change. Oh yeah, we'll be back to no. But I'm saying this: they weeks. they won't they won't happen any. They don't happen as much as they used to because no. they're people the don't realize the cameras at the store. You just can't get. Mitzi was sick. At the she store wasn't now. there. She wasn't yeah, you, watching. You get dicked up. You get your suck dicked at the store now. You pop up on somebody's Zoom while they're talking to the grandmother. The final steps. <laughs> A la Laurie kill Martin. God bless She's her, Laurie. Hospital, phenomenal. Dying of COVID. And there you are. <laughs> getting your dick sucked in the bathroom in the main room. Squirting in some girl's eyeball. And her telling you, is there a napkin back here? And you're like, nah. Not really. It's a litter. <laughs> they got light bulbs, though. You want a light bulb to wipe your eyeball with? Any dates? So you got June, June August? July. I mean, uh, July got canceled. I'm sorry. I'm at the House of Comedy in August. I believe it's August 6th, 7th, and 8th. I don't know. Let's keep your motherfucking prayers open. We got July 21st at Oxnard. Uh, that's where they'll start. And then hopefully July 29th through August 1st in Brea, if the COVID disappears, Please. if you motherfuckers don't start marching against something else next week. You know, Martian lives matter. Let's do that one. Because a Martian got fucking run over in New Mexico. How about fucking anything? Don't anything. joke about that, Joey. Don't joke about <laughs> that, Joey. You're being insensitive to Martians. I know. Fuck them, too. <laughs> All they've ever done is fucking create people to go crazy. I saw a Martian. I saw a Martian. Him and Bigfoot. Fuck them both. And uh, I love you with all my heart. I appreciate the video. I appreciate Thank your you. balls. Thank I you for people watching. Yeah. Because these motherfuckers obviously don't know. 
And number two, let me explain something to you. Hit me with the national anthem. Should I stand? What is that? That's the one from fucking... The one we had years ago is not here anymore. Well, you got to find the good one because... Uh... I feel like I have to stand. I, I'm, find, I got I nervous. I don't want to find no flutes. Nothing My daddy's like a that. Marine. It's got American flag on it. That's the one. Real quick. Lower that. Lower that. So I can talk over this. Get up, you fucks. It's Monday. The 30th, whatever the fuck it is of June. Enough is enough already. For three months, we've been living in fucking misery, confusion. We're broke. We're hungry. We want fucking answers. Stop blaming China. (laughs) Stop it. Stay in your house. Move out of that fucking apartment. But most importantly, social distance. And most importantly, besides that, this is a crucial fucking situation. And some of you are not happy. Put your fucking mask on, you fucking maggot motherfuckers. Let me tell you something. You think I like putting a fucking mask on? I don't like putting a mask on. I gotta smell my own breath. 50 years of rotten teeth and assholes and caniculous fucking breath and fucking nose hairs. I don't want smelling the fucking breath either. But you have to do it. Why? Because we're trying to keep each other alive. How can we be so fucking selfish? You know what? You want to go to the bar? Go fuck yourself. Go to the liquor store. Buy a bottle like every other American. And go outside and get three or four of your friends. And get fucked up. No more fucking parties. No more get-togethers. I don't want to see no black chicks twinking with your ass up and down. They told you you can't eat ass. And here you are spreading those asshole germs up in the air. I feel bad for midgets. You fucking filthy fucking animals. So do me one favor whether you agree or disagree. When you're home, when you're scratching your balls, listen, I wouldn't put a mask on either. I farted and I could smell the fart through the fucking mask. So if I could fart and smell it through the mask outside at the park, that means you can maybe get a little coronavirus. No, you can't get the coronavirus. What I'm telling you is it's a public fucking nuisance now. Pretty soon, <coughs> people are going to start getting hit in the head with fucking karate elbows and shit. Keep your mask on. Fourth of July is coming. Do you want to be fucking caught up in the Fourth of July? Where's the music? I'm trying to over. Where's the music? Bubble started again. <laughs> Where's the music? We're Americans. We got to fucking join in now. And enough is enough. Put on your fucking mask. It's not self-respect. It's not respect for us. It's starting to be respect for ourselves. I wear a mat. Put it on more. I want to hear more. I'm getting fired up here. Don't make me fucking get a bottle rocket and cut in half and make it chase different ethnic, ethnic fucking groups. You understand me? Get that mask. Put it on. Shut your fucking mouth. You fucking little animals in Miami. You fucking jungle Spanish people down there. You, got, you should wear a mask since day one. When I came from Cuba... They put a mask and goggles on me. That's how contagious I was, all right? So go fuck yourself. Don't let me break out the goggles. You fucking immigrant fucks. You're lucky you're here. Put on a fucking mask. It's a fucking right. And everybody else, you fucking white people that think you're better than everybody because you pay taxes and you fucking drive a, a Prius. So what? Go fuck yourself. Put on your mask. Black people, they're trying to kill us. Put on your mask. If it ain't a fucking cop, it's a bullet. Now it's some Chinese doing a laboratory trying to kill you. And Mexicans, first of all, if three is over 200 pounds, I don't want to see it together. Every time I see seven fat Mexicans, COVID is coming. It took out a family down in Orange County. If you're seven and eight Mexicans and you're heavy, knock it off. Invite three skinny cousins who just got here and ran the three miles. No more than four fat Mexicans can get together. And that's Cubans, Salvadorians, you Puerto Ricans too, you're not excluded. You're half black and you're half Spanish. You, you guys, they're, they're rolling the dice down there in Puerto Rico. Put your fucking mask on. Social distance and have a little fucking respect. You see a line, fuck six feet, ten feet. Put on your mask. I don't enjoy it either. Look at me. I look like a fucking... 
I look like I just got out the fucking uh, sucking 300 dicks. This is what you look like when they throw you out. What happened to him? They ran a train through him last night at the gay bar with 300 dicks. I don't like wearing a mask. Does it say in the American Constitution? No. But right now, as Americans, what's going on? And the numbers in Florida, Texas, Arizona, and California. Wear your fucking mask. It's Monday. Go out there and be a fucking champion. The church of what's happening now thanks you. I want to thank Eleanor Kerrigan. I want to thank fucking Lee Lee Leland. And I want to thank you guys for all the support of what's going on in each other's lives. You need comedy? I got the fucking answer. You understand me? But it all starts with the mask. I don't give a fuck. You're going to hate me for this. But as part of the church, us, we got to be Marines in this shit. We put on our mask. Have a great week. Have a great Monday. God bless you. Kick this motherfucking mule Get this fucking mask off me.